What you're going to watch here is a um, small walkout basement being set and poured, uh, followed by the crew coming back the next day to strip the forms off. Um, this is, uh, or this wall here will have about 190 foot of 8 foot wall and about 60 foot of 4 foot wall and there'll be about 21 inside corners in it. The little bay that you see towards the back here won't be formed. That's a walk out there framing that. This crew will be using uh, obviously 8 foot forms and 4 foot. It'll be the 8 inch hole pattern. So you'll see the narrower uh, 1 inch by 2 inch uh, brace on the backs. This crew has been using aluminum forms for over 20 years. They're using a, they're starting here with the corners, taking them about a, an hour to unload all their forms and hardware, and they're just now getting started at 9 o'clock. They showed up about 8 o'clock. This crew is going to have six men in it. Two of the guys have been setting for over 20 years. One of them's the owner. And uh, another couple guys have been around at it for a few years, and you got two that have probably just been doing it a few months. This company has uh, eight foot forms, a few six foot, four footers, two footers, and one footers. And they'll set and pour 150 to 175 basements a year, depending on weather and so forth. And this owner typically runs like he has here six. Sometimes he'll get up to eight men. They'll try to set and pour a basement starting in the morning like this. Take off in the afternoon, put in a footing. And as you'll see here towards the end, come back the next morning, strip these forms off and go to the next job. Aluminum forms are hot in the summer and they're cold in the winter. Right now it's late August, it's almost uh, 85, 90 degrees already at 9 o'clock in the morning. You'll, you'll see the experienced guys wearing lightweight jersey gloves or knit gloves year round just for handling. One thing you'll notice with aluminum forms, you don't need to drive those wedges real, real hard. They just put them in there and tap them. As a rule, those things aren't going to go falling out on you. With the wall ties bushing, they snug up with just a tap. You don't have to see how hard you can drive them home. Okay, what you're looking at here is a top tie. You see the two holes on one side, one hole on the other. That's an 810 top tie. It's used literally on the top for uh, the, what we call aluminum top clip whalers. Uh, you'll see here a little bit later, uh, this crew uses both the aluminum top clip whalers as well as regular uh, steel whalers. That extra hole is the extra two inches that protrudes out that uh, allows the uh, top clip whaler to be hooked on. 
around the country, uh, the top clip whalers are probably used by 5 to 10 percent of the contractors. They think they're a little faster. You'll be able to see how they're used today, a little later on. In a minute, what that gentleman's picking up on your left there is a wraparound outside corner or one piece wraparound. Um, he has W's and angles to use with fillers to make up outside corners as well, but all this wall happens to be nominal eight inch, so he's using his wraps. You'll notice as we go through here that they're using four ties in their eight foot wall. We recommend five, but again, 90% of the contractors are using four. On these four foot panels, they'll have two ties in a four foot wall. Two panels down here for the bottom part. What you're going to see here in a second is a block off or bulkhead plate. There it is. That one's a nominal 810. You'll, as we turn the corner here, you'll see a couple inches sticking out. There it is. They're bulkheading off here, or blocking off a, a nominal 8 inch wall. This design, you just put your pins and wedges in it and snug them up. Elsewhere in the wall, you'll see them using lumber. Like just below here on this uh, jump into the garage, that's lumber below and lumber on the cross. Many customers will have some bulkhead plates or block offs on their trucks, depending on the application they need to use. You can also use uh, W's or corner angles and uh, fillers to create your bulkheads. Again, what you're looking at there is a wraparound four foot outside corner and a four inch inside and two ties. Here he's getting his door bulkhead put together.
Okay, in a minute here, we're going to look at these uh, two by four aluminum top clip whalers, the ones that hook on the ties at the top. There they go. They're handy, but you just got to remember you can only use that style of whaler where you've got that 8, 10, or 10, 12 tie that sticks out. If you need to use whalers anywhere else, you'll need to use the common steel whalers. As you'll see a little bit later, uh, this contractor has both and uses them both on the same jobs. This contractor likes to whaler at his top hole. Some contractors will whaler uh, the second hole down, 16 or 18 inches down, depending on the hole pattern you got because they don't want to be walking up on the top. They want their guys to be standing down lower for dragging. It's really contractor's preference. Yeah, it's 11.37, they're breaking for lunch. 12.08, they're back for lunch, starting to straighten the wall. Hold tight. So in about uh, four and a half hours, uh, including breaking for lunch, they've come offloaded, stripped their footing lumber, set, aligned, and are spraying their forms and uh, about ready for concrete here. I think the concrete will be on the job in about 20 minutes. Again, uh, it doesn't look real big, but it's cut up. They got that porch in there. There's about 190 foot of eight foot here and about 60 foot of uh, short wall, mostly four foot, a little bit of six foot. Absolutely. You'll see he's spraying from the top. This again is contractor preference. Uh, some fellas do, some spray before they set up. In some areas of code will prohibit you from doing that because they won't allow you to have the form release on uh, rebar or footing. Keeps a spray tank on. I think you got a 60 gallon tank there on the truck. And we also make uh, five gallon sprayers. Some crews will have a few of them on each job. These are block downs for the garages. Those are the one piece ones that you have to get for specific wall width. We also make two piece adjustable block downs that you can see clamped each side of the rails there and then uh, cut lumber and put into whatever depth you need. Just a little wood shim holding the forms where they want them.
here they've got to angle that wall wing out they put lumber in there they nail between the forms on this and as you'll see in a minute they'll put some wood blocking to keep it from raising up but to hold it where they want it they just nailed between the forms Twelve fifty in the first concrete trucks there. Here they've um, used some fillers to um, just see clamp to the top to keep the concrete from bubbling up. With our forms, the wall ties forms, you can fill these up out of a truck as fast as you want. You can have full liquid head at eight foot. You know, nine foot forms the same as for that matter. This crew is probably pouring about a six inch slump and they puddle, they don't uh, vibrate or. Part of the speed of the aluminum system is being able to float off the top instead of having to shoot grade down the forms. And it does require you to spend a little bit more time getting your footing level. Once you get used to it, it uh, makes it much faster on top. Now, I don't show it in this film, but there, if you had to have, say, a 7-6 wall here or 7-8, you can uh, shoot grade down in here, but most fellows will just develop, uh, make up some paddles four inches deep, six inches, eight inches, whatever they need, drag off, then come back and float it. So they do pour less than the full height in these forms. It's not a problem. Now here we are the next morning, just before eight o'clock, they're showing up here and starting to knock their whalers off. This is the same job you just watch board. Now, today they're going to have five men out here stripping off. If you'll watch them here, they're hitting the tops of those aluminum top clip whalers and breaking that. What they're doing when they hit that, they're breaking that outside tie loop off. Some contractors think that uh, that process is faster. It really depends on your application, and again, that's another contractor preference item. These again are the wall ties, eight inch hole pattern forms with the one by two cross bracing. And uh, these forms have the one, two, five or our thickest face sheet on them. This particular contractor has uh, used wall ties forms since uh, wall ties came into business 18 years ago. And I've always used the eight inch hole pattern. We do make of course the 612 hole pattern which has a wider trapezoidal brace on it. So we can provide whatever uh, hole pattern or configuration uh, that a customer wants. Also forgot to mention here, it's a little after 8 o'clock uh, the next morning when they're stripping, but uh, the crew was uh, loaded up and was leaving the job site about 2.45 p.m. yesterday. So they got there about 8 in the morning and were finished about 2.45. And they arrived here about uh, 20 minutes ago, just a little before 8. Here's your aluminum top clip whaler, and right above it is your common steel whaler. So you can see them both.
also notice when they're stripping hardware here, they don't take and try to hammer the wedge out. They hit the pin and hold on to the wedge, and the wedge comes out. Then they take and knock the pin out. On inside corners, uh, they'll bend and, or knock the ties back on one side, get them out of the way, then they'll take and stick the claw of their hammer, the head of the hammer, inside the form and twist it, and it pops the inside corner out. And that's a 4x4 four four inside corner. usually one to two hits side to side and your tie and your tie ends are off the only exception to that is when you get into the longer length ties 14 16 20 your your odd ties you'll have to hit those straight down they're made a little different but your sixes eights tens twelves all hit side to side like you just saw With the aluminum forms, too, you're not going to have to fight them to get them off the wall. Now, occasionally, between two inside corners, you may have a little pressure build up, and until you get that first panel out, they might be tough. But as you'll see here, they really do come off pretty easy. Now, these are the smooth. Brick will be a little bit tighter. If you're not careful, you can bring a whole wall of them off with the smooth. Now, to repeat, this job's got about uh, 190 foot of 8 foot wall, 60 foot of 4 foot. He ordered 42 yards of concrete for, for this job. And I ran some quick numbers with the crews he had on. You can go back and check the times yourself, but he had about 52 man hours of labor in a 42 yard job. Now this company, as you saw, these guys weren't racing around. There are crews that are faster than these guys, but these fellas have got a reputation for putting out a good, a good wall. They keep their equipment up to date. They get things level and square. They've got a good reputation. I'd consider them about average on speed, and you had about a one and a quarter man hours per yard of concrete. So you can judge that with your own system as to what it does. You also get an awful nice looking wall. 